Hi everybody and welcome to our channel. How is everybody doing today? We hope you are having an amazing day. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you have an interest in unsolved crimes and mysteries, you should definitely lean back and get comfy while we break down today's case for you. Because this one, it's going to be a long one. We do a lot of digging and searching, hoping to find some new information and some answers for the victims' families. We go over all the details, all the theories and the unspoken theories, leaning only on facts and never on hearsay. We really want to help families find their loved ones or find closure. Let's jump right in. So today's case is every parent's worst nightmare, trust me. Do you remember the feeling when your child didn't come home on time and after a few minutes you decide, ah, I better go look for them on the playground. So you go down just to realize you don't see them anywhere. That panicking feeling and you just start to get cold sweat. Well, that feeling has been stuck with this mom for the past three years when her daughter ran away from home, presumed groomed online. Today's case is about Alicia Navarro and her mother's fight to find her daughter. Alicia is a 14 year old girl living in Glendale, Arizona, where she lived with her mom, Jessica Nunes, her stepdad, two siblings and her super cute dog, Sushi. Alicia was a very sweet and caring girl that was loved and adored by family and friends. She had high function autism that caused her to have some struggles in her social life and in school. Big crowded areas could be very overwhelming for her and be a very stressful situation. She did have a small circle of close friends that she had known since kindergarten and she would go out with them from time to time to hang out. But because of the autism spectrum, she did prefer to stay home in her safe place where she would do one of the things she really enjoyed, which was online gaming on Minecraft, Discord and Roblox. She did socialize a lot online, talking to a lot of strangers and Jessica found out about it. She sat Alicia down and had Amazing. a very serious conversation with her explaining to her the dangers of talking to strangers and sharing personal information online with people she didn't even know. And it did seem like Alicia understood. Alicia was a very smart and intelligent girl. By attending school, it became too much for her and Jessica let her be homeschooled for a few months. In the meantime, Jessica decided that she was gonna give Alicia a fresh start in a new school and that was Borgate Catholic High School. It did seem like Alicia, she fit right in. She loved it there that much, actually, that she would wake up by herself in the morning, just excited to go. Jessica really wanted Alicia to be more outgoing and socialize more with her friends outside the house. So she took her to therapy to teach her how to socialize and also feel comfy by doing so. She was then prescribed medication to help her with her anxiety. Alicia was most comfortable with a set schedule. She would wear the same clothes, wear the same shoes, eat the same food, and she did prefer her nuggets and her french fries from IHOP or McDonald's. Up to her disappearance, Alicia had told some friends in school that she had a new boyfriend now. She even told them she was thinking about running away to California and asked some of them if they wanted to come with her. They didn't take her seriously, so they told her no, and it was never mentioned again. Jessica also mentioned that Alicia went through some very, very unusual changes that was way out of her character before she went missing. First, she came into Alicia's room and noticed there was a huge hole in her window netting and asked her what happened, why is there a hole in your window netting? And Alicia claimed that a bird flew into it. Ah. Then she said Alicia didn't like body spray, she never wore it, but now she would ask her mom to buy her some. She would also ask her to buy her some makeup. Alicia never used these things. As you know, she really liked her hoodies. She liked to stay covered up and was so comfy in her hoodies, but now she would ask her mom to buy her bagless tops. Very strange. She also, like any teenage girl, liked her pop music, but now she really wanted to hear Pink Floyd. What's going on here? It's really strange. Then the comic book. 
Jessica never saw Alicia read a comic book, but now she would ask her to buy her one. It was Iron Man, Demon in the Bottle. She didn't see her read in that book once. It actually looked like the book hadn't even been opened. Very, very strange. The day of Alicia's disappearance, Jessica decided to take Alicia out for some quality time, some real mother-daughter bonding, just having a blast. So they went to get their eyebrows done. They went to the chocolate shop. They just had the best time ever. Of course, at some point they got hungry and they went to McDonald's so Alicia could get her french fries and her nuggets. By the end of the day, they went home and Alicia, she went direct to her room and went online. And Jessica knew she was having a great time because she could hear her laughter coming all the way from upstairs. About 1 a.m., Alicia came out of her room because she wanted a glass of water and she was really surprised to meet her mom on the staircase asking her why you're not sleeping when are you going to bed and Jessica told her she was waiting up for her husband to come home from work Alicia went back to her room and that's the last time that Jessica saw her daughter the following morning about 7 a.m. Jessica woke up and decided to take her dogs out to get some fresh air when she went to the kitchen, she noticed that the back door was slightly open and she asked her husband if he had forgotten to close it the previous night. He said no and he hadn't even been out there. They ran directly to Alicia's room to find her room empty. Alicia was gone. They ran down to the backyard and went outside and against the brick wall they saw four metal chairs stacked on top of each other. Because it had been raining all night, they could see Alicia's muddy footprints from the chairs climbing over the wall across the driveway to the corner where she had climbed on a pile of bricks and climbed the next wall as well. Alicia was gone. She had run away from home. They went back to her room to see if they could see if anything was missing and they actually found a note from Alicia that said, I ran away. I will be back, I swear, I'm sorry, Alicia. They noticed that some of her clothes was gone, her MacBook was gone, her iPhone 6, but they noticed she had forgotten all the chargers. But did she forget them? Or was it because she thought she was coming back very soon? We don't know. But Jessica, in a full panic mode, called the police and told them that she had run away from home. So the police came out and investigated the scene and they completely agreed that it looked like Alicia left on her own. So she had ran away. Um, I was laying down in the sofa watching TV. In the morning when I woke up, I have two small dogs, which I usually take out, you know, uh, to the restroom. And I walk through here, through the kitchen. And I noticed this door was semi-open like this. For me, it was awkward because, you know, um, what would be the door open so early in the morning? But I thought maybe my husband forgot it or since he was in the living room, forgot to close it. I didn't think too much of it. There was more than, I don't know how she stacked them up because there were like more. Like, I don't think she thought because the low one was like up here. And this was, was like up here and another one. Like, I, I don't think she, you know what I mean? <laughs> there were like, like, there was like four chairs here accumulated like that. So I don't understand. I get stuck. When she jumped, you could, there were like her, her shoe prints were going towards this direction. That's why I know she jumped from here. And there was a shovel accumulated like that. These bricks were over here more. We, you know, it cleaned up, it's been a year. But she jumped through here and I believe she used this, you know, to jump like this. Oh, sorry, to the other side. Um, because that's where the footprints were going towards there. Um, 
Unfortunately, there's gravel on the other side, so it's hard to know what direction she went because it's rocks. There is no, there is no um, prints from there, you know, to see if she went that way or this way. Jessica was especially worried for Alicia because she was on the autism spectrum and was known to be very shy and anxious in social situations. She was on medication and had a compromised immune system. COVID-19 was kicking in and she knew that this could be very overwhelming for Alicia. Jessica explained to the police how important it was for Alicia to be found because of her high functional autism. The police, they put out a silver alert for her because Alicia is not able to take care of herself outside. According to Jessica, she wouldn't even be able to take the bus by herself. Jessica didn't feel like the investigation and the search was going fast enough, so she decided to go out and look for her by herself. She went day after day and night after night, just searching and looking for Alicia everywhere. She went knocking on all the neighbors' doors, begging them to check their security cameras, and a white truck was seen leaving the neighborhood just around the time that Alicia went missing. She was last seen online at 3.26 a.m. in the night between the 14th and the 15th of September 2019. It's believed that Alicia was groomed online by a predator. It could have been the same guy that she called her new boyfriend or the guy who was talking and texting with her online that made her burst out in laughter all the time and by doing so, slowly gaining her trust because Alicia didn't trust people easily. Jessica was contacted by a special organization called the Anti-Predator Project. It's an incredible team of special trained agents that specializes in human trafficking and missing children. All their work is free of charge for the victim's families. Their job can be extremely dangerous, but they're still out there every day trying to save all the victims. Jessica was told to keep Alicia's face out there so nobody forgets about her. So she's out there every day hanging new missing person flyers and handing them out herself as well. With the help from GoFundMe, she was also able to put up some huge billboards with Alicia's picture and a description. But it's been three years now and Alicia is still missing. Jessica is still creating awareness every day through her Facebook group called Finding Alicia. And even though it's so dangerous, and I personally think it's so sad, I wish I could help her, but Jessica, she's out at night walking the streets in the dark, just desperate to find her daughter. I can only imagine what she's going through. It must be a nightmare. Jessica is still spending all her time trying to find Alicia and bring her home. But in the meantime, she also started helping other families finding their children. Grooming online is so dangerous and people, they keep saying they understand and they're watching their kids. But actually, to be honest, I don't think they really understand how dangerous it is because kids are still going missing every single day. They're being groomed online. You really, really, really have to watch your kids. Watch what they're doing. Watch what their mood is like after they go offline. Watch what mood they're in when they are online. Are they doing their homework or are they being groomed? Just please watch your kids. We put together a video that's very disturbing, but it's just to get printed in people's minds they're dangerous. We don't want any more kids to go missing. But I have to say, viewers' discretion is advised. It's very disturbing and very graphic. So, watch this.
So this investigation has been ongoing for a really long time. We had to look over every single detail we could find online. We've been discussing every single theory and possible theories over and over and over again. Um, because we feel like it's so important that you double check everything because you don't want to say or do anything wrong that could damage something. We just really try to think outside the box and it seems like in this case that Alicia's case is stuck in this box. She was groomed online, period. When in reality we don't know because she could have taken her MacBook snuck out of the house to go to a friend's house and play online gaming with them. She could have met up with her ex-boyfriend and met the wrong person on the street. We don't know. Probably the police and the agents, they know more than we do, but we have to lean on what we know. We can't just do hearsay or make up our own stories or do a lot of guessing because that's, that's just unprofessional and no, it's just a big no-go. So we did find a lot of, uh, a lot, we did find some new information and it might have nothing to do with Alicia's case. But again, it could have everything to do with her case. Is it realistic? Yes. Is it possible? Definitely. So we think everything is worth mentioning. So this case is just... Everything needs to be checked, right? Uh, just want to tell you, we want to share our thoughts and our opinions with you, but it's so important that you keep an open mind. And remember, we don't want to offend anyone. We're not trying to upset anyone. We just really, really want to help find Alicia. So be open-minded and just try to think that step further, if you know what I mean. Just watch this. And let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Thank you. So during our investigation, we found out about two kidnapping attempts in Glendale the same year Alicia, she went missing. And as far as we know, and all the digging we did, we couldn't find anything that suggested they had been caught. So as far as we know, both males, they are still wanted by the police. The first attempt happened on May 7th, well, a 15-year-old girl was approached by a man from behind on a parking lot while she was loading an item into her mother's car. He grabbed her and dragged her into a nearby alley where he told her to stay quiet or he would silence her forever. The teenage girl managed to fight him off and break free and ran home and called 911. The second kidnapping attempt happened on August 14th when a 13-year-old girl was waiting for the bus and saw a man sitting on a white car. He approached her on foot while asking her if she had a boyfriend and then grabbed her hand and her waist. According to the police, she also broke free and managed to get some help. Alicia was 14 years old and wearing braces when she went missing in 2019. She is now 18 years old and probably had her braces removed. So we were thinking if she had been to a licensed dentist, the police would know about it by now and probably have found her. So if she's with some bad people, um, could they be working with dentists, working underground or undercover or whatever you call it, unlicensed? Because we found a report from 2018 where two women were arrested by special agents for allegedly performing unlicensed dental work in Glendale. They did procedures including tooth extractions using laser drills and surgical tools. They even stole the identity of another dentist by unlawfully using his prescription pad to write out medication for one of the victims. Could it be possible that she had them removed by people like them? Because we know they got caught in 2018 but are they the only one working unlicensed as dentists? We don't know. So Alicia went missing during the COVID-19 pandemic in 2019, which made us think, has the medical system been checked on a regular basis? We are thinking PCR tests, DNA, 
the COVID-19 vaccines and a regular health check. Of course, we assume the police is already on top of this, but then we took it a step further and asked ourselves, what would the predator do if Alicia got ill? Because he probably couldn't take her to a normal doctor. That would be way too risky. So we started doing some digging again and found two new stories. The first one happened the 26th of April 2018, where a full organization of unlicensed doctors were caught treating patients in Arizona. The second one happened the 25th of April 2023, where a male was impersonating a doctor in Los Angeles, California, where he was known to have treated more than 1,000 patients. Have doctors like this been checked into? Because, yeah, those two cases were sold and they got caught. Are there more of them out there working unlicensed? We don't know. But is it possible? Definitely. I hope the police is on top of this. They probably are. So now we're going to be talking about the hole that Jessica found in Alicia's window netting. Alicia claimed a bird flew into it. Right. <laughs> nice story, but we don't buy it. Anyway, we saw in a few videos that someone thinks that she might have made that hole herself to pass notes back and forth with someone outside her window. I find that very hard to believe because Alicia's room is on the first floor. There's no possible way anybody would be able to reach up there. And if she was throwing notes out the window, it would land in a closed driveway, meaning that the person who was going to pick it up would have, an, would have to open the metal gates that's extremely noisy or be climbing the wall to go into that driveway to pick up the note. So they would have been caught by neighbors or their security cameras. And even if the person got the note, they wouldn't be able to write anything back because it's way up there. No way, no, I don't buy that story. Our theory, our opinion is that we have two different theories on this one. We thought a lot about this one and why would you make a hole in your window screen? And it's, it's a weird size. Why? We are thinking, number one, I don't think, I don't think this contact with this predator was something new. And I believe he's been on her street before, driving or walking uh, up and down her street. I think she made that hole as a viewpoint. If you look at the hole, she has a perfect uh, view of the street, who's coming and going, in cars or walking. So... Is that possible that she made like a spy hole? Yeah, it's possible. The other theory is that if, if they were texting online and let's say they became friends, or uh, what do you say on the find my phone, friend finder, is it Snapchat where you can see your friend's location? That would mean that he would know where she lived. So he could easily have walked back and forth and Alicia wouldn't dare going out to meet him because Jessica told her not to. So could she have used it to take her hand out and wave to show him where she is? If she did that, he would know exactly what house she was in and which room was hers. Is it possible? It's a bit of a long shot, but yeah, it's definitely possible because if Alicia was in love and this guy was walking up and down her street trying to find her, I think she would find it romantic and really sweet. It would be a huge red flag for me, but as a teenager, I think you would think it was cute and he would be like, oh my God, I can't even see you. And she's 
poking her teeny hand out saying, here I am. I think it's possible. Like I said, a bit of a long shot, but definitely possible. So we're going to be talking about Alicia's note because Jessica said it looked like the note that Alicia left, it looked like it had been written in a hurry. So the back door to the backyard was open as well, also indicating she was in a hurry. But there's just something about this that doesn't make sense to me because if you're in a hurry and you're late for something, you write the note in a hurry, you run out the door, you don't even have time to close the door behind you. It could also be because the door was noisy and she didn't want to wake up anyone. But then she runs to the backyard and then stops and takes her time to stack four metal chairs. She jumps the wall run over to the metal gates and decides those gates are too noisy so she climb up on a pile of bricks and jump over that wall as well so is it possible that the the chairs were already stacked i think she i think she planned this and i think the chairs were already stacked and let me tell you why we have been watching a lot of videos and trying to find a lot of information about Alicia's case and actually all of them says that her stepdad came home from work, Jessica went to bed and the stepdad fell asleep on the couch. It turns out that we saw an interview with Jessica that said he didn't fall asleep on the couch, she did. And the reason I'm mentioning it is because Jessica said in an interview that she's a very light sleeper. So that means no noises or she will wake up pronto. So she writes the note in a hurry. She sneaks out the door and doesn't close the door because one, she's in a hurry. Two, she don't want to wake up her mom. But when she turns the corner, there's the brick wall and it's actually only like, I don't know, it's hard to say, but it's very close to where Jessica is sleeping. And those metal chairs, they're really noisy. And a second thing is, if she started stacking those chairs in the middle of the night, don't you think the dogs would have barked if they heard noises coming from the garden? I think so. So I think it was planned and I think she was supposed to leave before before three o'clock at night and that's why she got really surprised when she went out and met Jessica on the staircase where she went out at one o'clock to get a glass of water. I think she was she was not going for a glass of water. She was checking if the coast was clear. And she was very surprised to meet Jessica out there because she was leaving. So what do you think? I, th I think it was planned. And I don't know, I'm just convinced. I'm really convinced those chairs were stacked already because all that commotion in the garden in the middle of the night, the dogs would have barked and Jessica, a very light sleeper, she would have woken up. So... And it doesn't make sense. Why be very quiet with the door to run in the garden and be really noisy, stacking chairs, jump the wall, run to the other end of the driveway, not using the metal gates because they're noisy. So jump the wall. So quiet, quiet and make a noisy in the middle. It doesn't make sense. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section. So we're still talking about that note because there's just something about that note that's really annoying. Um, I've been reading that note over and over and over again. And first of all, when you write, I ran away. That means like, I ran away, I'm not coming back. But when you write, I ran away, but I will be back. Then you didn't run away, you went on a trip. Does, does it make sense? Do you know what I mean? 
If you just if you're planning on coming back, you didn't run away. You went on a trip. So I ran away. I'm coming back. Doesn't make sense. And another thing is, those words. I swear, like, I swear I'm coming back. Why? Why? Why was she trying to convince her mom that she was coming back? Like she didn't want her to worry. So I actually asked Jessica if those words, I swear, was something that Alicia would use in her normal daily life. And Jessica confirmed Alicia never used those words before. It was the first time. I think those words, I swear, came from the predator. He's been promising her a lot of things, and I think he kept all his promises. And that's why she didn't have a problem going with him the very last time. Because he swore he was going to bring her back. He promised to bring her back home. So she went with him and he broke his promise. Another thing is, exactly the same day she went missing, the 15th of September 2019, she was last seen online at 3.26 a.m. The same day, there was a comic convention in San Mateo, California, where she told people she wanted to run away to. She brought her comic book as well. Did she, did she get told that they were going to that convention? That's why she brought the comic book, so she could fill it with autographs. Or was it a present for the printer? Because... Autistic people have a tendency of when they show people they love them or they like them or they uh, they want to show them, they buy presents. Um, so I'm thinking, could this have been a present for the predator? If so, he, she has then she has known him for months, because as far as I remember, Jessica bought that book for her a month before months before she went missing and she said it looked like she never opened the book she didn't even read it and it was a 200 dollar comic book so we don't know nobody knows but it's a theory so let me know what you think there is one more thing left to say in this video and that's going to be a tough one because this case just really upsets me and uh, it's just not fair and it's been too long, she needs our help and she needs, she needs to come home. So we have a message for Alicia and a helping hand. Hopefully it can help bring her home. So um, Alicia, if you're watching this video by any chance possible, please try to stay strong and hold on because there's still a lot of people looking for you. We know it's been a while, but nobody has given up. Your mom is out looking for you every single day and posting your picture and your description everywhere, hoping to find you. She loves you so, so very much and she misses you so much. And please don't be scared. And if you are scared sometimes, just close your eyes and think about your happy place back home where you have a family that loves you so much. There is a way if you are outside sometimes and you're not able to talk to anyone or ask for help. There is a way you can ask for help without saying a word. There's a hand signal you can make and everybody will know that you need help. Please, please watch this video. Domestic violence can take up a lot of forms like sexual abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse and even threats of abuse. The universal symbol of domestic abuse is Open your palm, tuck in your thumb, close your fist and trap your thumb. If you see this symbol anywhere, it's a cry for help and you need to help them. And if you are in a dangerous situation and need help, you need to do the same signal and this will tell people that you need help. Please pay attention to whatever is happening around you and keep your eyes open because you might just save a life. Until then, I just want to say please stay safe until you find your way home. Stay strong and stay safe, please. So that's it for today's video. We hope that you enjoyed watching our video and 
before we finish, I want to say that please watch your kids online. I don't care if you're violating their private life. You need to keep them safe. You need to, even though they say everything's fine, I'm just on the computer with my friends, take control and monitor what they're doing. Um, I also have to say that I contacted um, the bosses, the owners of Roblox and Discord and some other platforms and I explained to them about the problem about grooming online and human trafficking and everything that's going on on their websites. It's going on on their websites and I told them about Alicia's case and referred them to Jessica's Facebook and begged them please go look because you have no idea how bad it is. And these predators are using your platforms to grab children. Um, unfortunately, none of them wrote me back. Um, so <laughs> we just have to keep trying. Just, I know I said it a million times, just for God's sake, watch your kids. Children are going missing every single day. I just I just went to my sister's house the other day and My two nephews they love doing online gaming and I heard the youngest one say He was I was sitting in the living room and he was in his room and I heard him shouting Yay Roblox is just the best game ever uh, I was like uh, what? I said to my sister, is he playing on Roblox? Block him, block it, stop it, delete it, do something. And she was like, calm down, it's safe. I already checked everything. I said, yeah, Jessica said the same. She thought her daughter was safe in her room. Just be careful. This Don't trust any of those things. The, the most important thing is keep your kids safe. I can't say it enough. Watch your kids. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. We really hope you will push that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos. Until then, have a really nice day. I'll see you later. Bye for now.